last video I built this rear end and I don't really like how it looks. It's not low profile enough for me. So I think I'm just gonna cut it off right here and then use parts of the ATV frame. So this is what's left of the Yamaha Grizzly quad that I bought in the last video. I'm actually going to cut this quad in half like this and then I'm going to use these bottom sections for the mower. That way it's going to save us some time and I don't have to do any guessing on my suspension mounts. And then these rusty parts I'm going to get sandblasted. So yeah, let's go ahead and cut this thing up. something else I got my parts back from sandblasting here are the rear a arms and we have the triple pipes now there was some hidden damage that the sandblasting showed Check that out. Look at that bird poop right there. Unfortunately, there was also some hidden damage on the triple pipes right here. There's some rust through spots. So I plan to just polish this up and heat treat it so it kind of pops like a dirt bike pipe. So this freshly blasted frame is going to need a coat of primer. And like I said, I'm only going to be using bits and pieces off it for the mower. Uh, it's just going to save me some time. So yeah, the plan is just to weld this back on, make sure everything is straight. I got some plates right here that are gonna be welded to the ends of these tubing. So this rear end is simply gonna butt up like that. I'm gonna make sure it's straight and then weld it. So guys, I really love how this turned out and of course the lawnmower body will still fit over this and we'll still be gusseting the crap out of it right here and then like right here we'll be gusseting all that and probably throwing some more supports just because a butt weld like this isn't really that strong. So yeah, we're just going to gusset everything. And some of you guys were asking if the engine spins the same way as the differentials. Well, unfortunately the answer is no, it does not spin the same way. 
So if I give this cord a little yank, it spins anti-clockwise, whereas this differential spins clockwise in relation to the engine. My answer to that is this reverse box right here. This one has straight cut gears. It's off a of Polaris quad. Uh, someone in the comments said he runs a similar one on his snowmobile quad. You might as well run reverse on his beast because having 4x4 without reverse is going to kind of suck. So yeah guys, I hope that makes sense. Groundhog Plumbing actually had a similar problem, but they came about it a different way. If this doesn't work, they make motorcycle reverse boxes that can handle like 300 horsepower. The belt system is going to be attached to this gearbox, and then there will be a chain drive running down. So yeah, now let's go ahead and mount the front diff. So guys, the wheels and tires have finally arrived for the build, so I'm going to head over to the tire shop, get them mounted, and fit them on just to see how they look like. Gracias. So now it's time to get started on the basement compartment. So it's going to house our gearbox, our pulleys, and then various drivetrain parts are going to be on it. And it's also going to act as a form of protection. So guys, I just got a quick little mock-up right there. There's some space right there to allow room for the engine mounts and then the steering shaft. I was just trying to figure out the clearance for this pulley. It's most likely going to be in this spot. I figured that'd be the best way to route it. So it took a few tries, but we got our bottom frame rails. They're gonna butt into that square tube right there. Okay guys, so I got the divs mounted, everything looks really nice, and our ARM tabs is pretty much all done as well. Before I mount the engine, I want to order my radiator and see where the best place to put it would be, and then we'll finalize the engine mounting stuff. Well guys, I'm getting these wheels mocked up and they just look beautiful. 21 inches, so they're pretty small. They're the smallest I can run with the front brakes not being deleted. All the sheet metal is staying right here. We're going to make sure we make it look really nice. But guys, I'm just really happy with how this thing is turning out.
Man, that mower is really coming along. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button down below. Comment down below and let me know what you think of the tires. Let me know what you think of the ride height. Should I leave it there? I am shooting for more of an all-purpose build. Like, I want this thing to be good at everything. So, I think that right there is going to be a mad setup. Actually turned out to be around a 7 to 8 inch stretch. Which, it still should do wheelies. But it's going to be pretty controllable, I think. When I'm finished with this thing, it is going to be making easily 100 at the crank. Probably even more. 110 is a fairly conservative estimate. This build wouldn't have been possible without Caleb, my subscriber, so big shout out to him. If you want to see sneak peeks of this build, please follow my Instagram. It's Vasily Builds. Big thanks to HTP for supplying me with all my welding stuff and Go Power Sports for all the Power Sports stuff. So check them out in the description below. So if you enjoyed, please share the video. Please leave a like down below. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned, peace, and God bless. So Chad picked up this engine, my uh, Grizzly 660. And uh, yeah, he's going to be building. My Chinese buggy. One day. Appreciate it, man. Pleasure. Thank yep. you so much. Mm -hmm. Nice meeting you. And uh, I'll send you a pic when, it, when it's in there. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sixty. Okay, sixty on that one, and then this one.